Ellen Thomas. Ellen Thomas is coming. Ellen is here. Good to see you all. I was on the West Coast talking to Women's International League for Peace and Freedom branches about HR 1976, Eleanor Holmes Norton's bill to abolish nuclear weapons, and asking them to seek support in Congress when I heard about Connie's death. And I thought, do I want to fly back now, or will I just trust that she has enough friends to take care of things? And I trusted him. Look at this. This is fabulous. It's so wonderful. Um, I met Connie in 1984, March 18, 1984. It's about a day like this, an evening, in the evening, and she was lying on the sidewalk between two large signs with nothing to protect her except a ski suit. And one of the signs was a mushroom cloud that said, Revelation, this need not be our end. And the reason that I had come to Washington, D.C. the year before was I had decided the only place to, to work against nuclear weapons was in D.C. because that's where the decisions were being made. And also I decided if there was going to be a nuclear war, and at that time it was looking kind of possible, um, I thought I'd rather be at ground zero and be vaporized than have to live in the aftermath of a nuclear war. The other sign she had was Mr. President, why don't you come out with the forced homeless? And at that time, I was writing a play about homeless people called The Great People, G-R-A-T-E, about the fact that Ronald Reagan was telling his people to shut down the, the steam grates that homeless people were keeping themselves warm at in the wintertime. And so I stopped and I saw this itty-bitty woman who was not five feet tall and probably weighed 85 pounds, and I said, how long have you been here? She said, three years. I was astounded. And I said, um, so do you do this by yourself? And she said, no, I have a friend. He's a philosopher. His name is Thomas. So I came back the next day to meet this philosopher. And three weeks later, I gave my daughter everything I owned, joined the vigil. And three weeks after that, Thomas and I were married in Lafayette Park. And we were married for 25 years before he died in 2009. At that time, <clears throat> Connie was never really happy that I was here. Um, she had Thomas for three years, and I kind of horned in on she felt like, so she didn't like me very much. But she didn't like a lot of people very much. <laughs> she was pretty stern. And before, when she was still talking to me, she told me her story which was that she was born an aristocrat in, in Spain. She was the granddaughter of a judge, and her parents were killed in an automobile wreck, and she was raised by her grandparents. And Franco had her grandfather um, assassinated, and so she was raised by nuns. And I think if there are any nuns here, oh, I know there are some nuns here. You know about Connie's convictions about what right and wrong. She knew what was right and she knew what was wrong and she stood for it her entire life. And some of the things she thought were wrong, maybe some of us, the rest of us didn't think. But by golly, there she was, night and day, 35 years. And I was blessed to be out here for 18 of them with her, cursed also. But, <laughs> but, um, she, uh, she loved children, she loved animals, she, she couldn't have her own daughter, so she spent the rest of her life trying to make the world a safe place for everybody's children. Now, the vigil, I am so excited to see, is still going. And uh, people are asking me, well, are you going to come back, Ellen? I don't know, I sure hope I don't have to. But, I thank all of you who are keeping the vigil going. Thank you so much. You're in my hearts and for heart and prayers. And when I do come to town, I'll come see if anybody needs a break to go to the bathroom or something. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you.